Hi again, it's good to see you. And uh, today we're looking at Mark chapter 4, verses 26 to 34. That's Mark chapter 4, verses 26 to 34. Pause the video, have a read, and let's talk about it. So today we see two more parables about the kingdom of God. Uh, you remember that we have uh, saw a couple of days ago from Mark, ch- early, early part of Mark chapter 4, uh, the parable of the sower, and we actually heard how that one was uh, uh, explained by Jesus to his disciples. Uh, as you'll notice with these two parables, we're not told the ex- Jesus' explanation of them. Uh, we're told in verses 33 and 34 that Jesus did explain to his disciples, uh, but uh, that's not shared with us at this point here, is it? Although I think as we... Given what we've, we know about parables and what we know about how the first parable was, how the first parable was explained, um, we can see something of what these parables are teaching us about the kingdom of God and, and what Jesus was teaching uh, his disciples at the time. Uh, and the main thing to remember here is that uh, the kingdom of God may look unimpressive or ineffective, but it's not. And let's see what these two, how these two parables show us that. Firstly, we've got the parable of the growing seed. So we're told this is what the kingdom of God is like. And we get a fairly normal farming type scene, don't we? A man scatters seed on the ground. Uh, uh, Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. Now, at one level, this is fairly normal, isn't it? We plant a seed and then it grows. Although it's interestingly, um, this is not totally normal farming practice, is it? Uh, most farmers I know, and I'm sure farmers of the time were similar, don't just plant a seed and then sit back and wait and wait, doing nothing else. They water it, they care for the seed, they make sure it's all looking good. Uh, they do quite a bit. It's true, and this is part of the point of Jesus, that they don't actually make the seed grow. The growth of the seed into, into uh, a, uh, a stalk and then a head and then the full kernel, that is completely within well, actually, it's within God's hands, but it's out of their control, isn't it? And that's the point here of what the uh, parable is saying, is that the kingdom of God, remember what the seed was in, uh, in the first parable? I think we're meant to think the same thing here. The seed was the preaching of the word. Uh, the kingdom of God, uh, when the word is preached, it may look as though nothing is happening. And sometimes that's how we can feel, isn't it? We, uh, uh, we, we might share the good news with our friends or we might hear the Bible taught and it appears to have no effect and n- no one becomes Christian, no- nothing happens. It seems ineffective. But here Jesus is telling us that the kingdom of God, while it may seem ineffective and while the preaching of the word may seem ineffective, it's not. In fact, uh, even, and, and, and the result of the preaching of the word is totally outside of our control. Uh, we may preach the word, we may check to see if anything's happening, like the farmer checks to see the seeds growing, uh, until one day all that's left is to bring in the harvest. And sometimes that's what we've got to wait for, isn't it? The word is preached, the kingdom of God is growing. It may not seem obvious, it may not seem uh, clear to others, others may think it's not happening at all, but one day the harvest will come. Uh, I'd want to say one day Jesus will return and all those who trust in him will be saved. Uh, Others may think that the the words of Jesus, the kingdom of God, uh, the gospel, uh, others around us may may think that it's it's totally useless. People in Jesus' time may have thought that all Jesus was doing was not going to work at all. But Jesus here reminds us that while it may appear As if nothing's happening, that is not the case at all. Under the surface, in the soil, there is absolutely amazing things going on. And the second parable we hear kind of says a similar type thing, but in a different way. Again, we compare the kingdom of God, again, to not to any seed, but to a mustard seed, which was the smallest seed you could plant in the ground. And again, the kingdom of God seems very, very small. It's just one man, Jesus, going around teaching. Uh, Soon enough, he's going to die. It'll look like it's totally uh, useless then, won't it? But actually, that sea which looks little and which looks totally powerless and seems to have no use at all, will one day grow into the largest of trees with branches 
where the birds of the air can perch in its shade. And um, this might even be a little reference to uh, the dream of King Nebuchadnezzar in, in Daniel, uh, the most powerful king in the world who was in his dream likened to a tree where all the birds of the world and all the peoples of the world could come and find shade uh, and find nesting. What, what Jesus is telling us here in this parable is that, again, the kingdom of God may look little, but it is extraordinary. It will grow into something extraordinarily powerful. In fact, the kingdom of God will grow into something which is the rule of the whole world. Now, this again reminds us, we can sometimes feel powerless and weak and small. But if we trust Jesus, we are part of God's kingdom. If we trust Jesus, we are part of something which will one day be seen by all the world to be, uh, uh, to be dominant of the whole world. will be seen across all the world to be uh, uh, the one true king, Jesus. We may feel small. Jesus looked small and weak and powerless at one point. But even in his smallness and weakness and apparent powerlessness, he was becoming king of the whole world. These two parables remind us that even when we feel powerless, even when things look powerless for God and look as though God is uh, the cause of the gospel is not going well, that is definitely not the case. God is truly in charge and the cause of the gospel, the growth of his kingdom is happening whether others acknowledge it or not. And we can trust that God, who's in charge, will keep his kingdom growing until the time when he brings the harvest in, when Jesus comes back and takes all who trust in him to be with him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can trust you, uh, that your kingdom is always growing. Thank you that even in, Je in Jesus' time, when it looked small and weak and even ineffective, that it was not. We thank you that the preaching of your word is always effective and that your kingdom is always growing. And Father, we pray that you'd use us and show us the growth of your kingdom day by day here uh, in, in Sydney, in Australia and around the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow.